Muslims for Palestine. With us is uh, Dr. Abdullah Ma'roof. Tonight we will be discussing uh, the situation unfolding in Masjid Al-Aqsa. As uh, you guys have seen by now, um, we've seen some horrible images coming out of Masjid Al-Aqsa of uh, Zionist forces attacking worshippers after Salat Al-Fajr. Uh, with us now to discuss more uh, about the situation and what's going on is Dr. Abdullah Ma'roof. Yes, brother. Jazakallah khair, inshallah. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Abdullah, if you could, if you could kindly just d describe to us the the situation that's unfolding and the situation that's still going on currently. Yeah, actually, as we as we are watching on the in the news and uh, online as well, uh, live from Masjid Al Aqsa, everything is is quite um, hard. Uh, the occupation uh, forces are have uh, uh, broken to Masjid Al Aqsa again. Just, just a few minutes ago, and they're trying actually to evacuate the people from inside the, the, the Qibli Mosque in particular, and the other sides of Masjid Al-Aqsa as well. They're trying to their best to, uh, to change actually the uh, uh, situation inside Masjid Al-Aqsa by evacuating everybody and making Masjid Al-Aqsa uh, free of people actually. And this uh, shows that they are preparing for something uh, today. We know that today is, is Friday and, and uh, today evening in, uh, in Palestine in our time uh, marks the beginning of the, uh, of the Pesach uh, celebrations. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fanatic groups actually of or the, the, what they call themselves as the temple uh, groups uh, are threatening to start or to, or to try uh, to break into Masjid Al-Aqsa tonight with uh, the sacrificial and to try to sacrifice uh, goats inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. And this marks uh, a change of the status quo in, inside Masjid Al-Aqsa and, and a huge uh, change in the status quo uh, of Masjid Al-Aqsa. And that is actually why uh, the people in, in, in Jerusalem are so, uh, um, are so uh, angry about what is happening. Uh, let me just note something, brother, here. And... Uh, today we noticed in the morning that uh, the Israeli uh, forces tried or are still uh, trying to pretend as if they didn't have any uh, any idea first off of attacking the Muslims in San Masjid Al-Aqsa or attacking the prayers in Masjid Al-Aqsa and, and evacuating them from Masjid Al-Aqsa. However, um, just a small note uh, here, when you have uh, troops ready to evacuate 30,000 people from uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa, um, that shows that you have a plan for them to be evacuated and to be uh, driven out of, of the mosque. And having this plan to drive the people out of the, masjid, uh, out of the mosque during, uh, after Fajr uh, is not new in Masjid Al-Aqsa. We've seen, we've noticed something like that, we've seen it before by the Israeli forces in 2019. In 2019, uh, during Eid al-Fitr uh, celebration and after the prayer, before the prayer, uh, at, at that time, the uh, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's office at that time um, assured many times and confirmed many times that, he's, that, uh, that the government, uh, the Israeli government is not allowing the fanatics to, or the uh, right uh, fanatic groups uh, to break into Masjid Al-Aqsa during the Eid al-Adha celebration. However, during uh, that day, we've noticed that, that there were thousands of, of the uh, Israeli troops ready to evacuate Masjid Al-Aqsa and to, to drive everybody out of the mosque after the end of the prayer. And this is what happened. After they drove the, everybody from Masjid Al-Aqsa, I'm speaking about the Muslims as well, uh, after, after they drove all the Muslims from Masjid Al-Aqsa, after the end of the prayer, they let the fanatics groups actually to enter, <clears throat> to break into Masjid Al-Aqsa and to perform uh, their rituals inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. And that was something um, tell, to, that told us a lot about the Israeli government's um, uh, promises, if I could say. And as we can see today, they are trying their best since many days to pretend uh, that they are not allowing the, the, the fanatics, to, uh, the fanatic groups to, uh, to bring, uh, or the extremists as well, to bring these uh, goats inside Masjid Al-Aqsa or to try to sacrifice them inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. However, what, we see, what we've seen today morning 
and uh, what we've seen by those uh, troops being ready to uh, drive everybody out of the mosque and evacuate everybody from the mosque shows that they have a plan and they it could mean that they are actually planning to let uh, the sacrifice happen tonight which is something if it happens it will be very very uh, dangerous and just a few minutes ago i was just reading some notes that that I received, uh, claiming that the Israeli police are not tr uh, threatening of uh, pre preventing the whole Juma prayer as well, the Friday prayer from Masjid Al-Aqsa today, and that threatening Muslims as well to, in, in Jerusalem not to be uh, to be able to pray today in Masjid Al-Aqsa. If this happens, that it it confirms what we are saying today. It it could mean that the Israeli police would feel that they succeeded actually in evacuating everybody and uh, making the land clear inside Masjid Al-Aqsa uh, for the extreme groups to enter by any time during the night and claiming that they are just uh, doing it alone without without uh, any coordination with the government or with the, with the police uh, forces, uh, which, is, which would be a lie, I know, and everybody knows. Uh, and and they could do a sacrifice inside Masjid Al-Aqsa, which and this would be a very major uh, break of the uh, of the status quo inside inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. Doctor Abdullah, I think uh, one question that that I have, and I'm sure many of the viewers have, is we we've seen an escalation since the beginning of Ramadan, the different rules that were placed on workers. Um, do you feel that this has all been leading to this? Uh, absolutely. No. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, if anybody th thinks, anybody who thinks that, that the Israeli government is trying to avoid the escalation uh, in Jerusalem or in the Palestinian territories is wrong. Why? Because they are actually trying to do a different issue. They are trying to gain what they want and pretend not being challenged by the, by, uh, after, after they do what they want, actually, and uh, after they do what they are doing now. And, and just as, as, as an evidence on that, just to have a note on, on the name of the operation that the Israeli forces are doing in, in the West Bank and in Jerusalem as well, which is called uh, in, in Arabic, Kasr al-Amwaj, the breaker of the uh, waves or the waves breaker. So they are calling it waves breaker not waves avoider. They are not uh, trying to avoid waves of anger uh, by the Palestinians. They are trying to break these uh, uh, waves of anger. So they are not uh, trying actually to de-escalate. They are trying to do whatever you wa they want and at the same time not being challenged, not being uh, challenged by anyone of the Palestinians, not have any reaction of, of the actions of the Israelis. Just, just yesterday, we had six people killed. Six Palestinians were killed in one day in, in Palestine. So how could you just come now and say that this is actually a, an action, not a reaction? It is actually a reaction. And the people in, in, in Jerusalem, once they hear and they see by, them, by their own eyes that the Israeli government is, is actually uh, helping those extremist uh, groups to perform the rituals and break into Masjid Al-Aqsa and change the status quo in Masjid Al-Aqsa, you cannot pr uh, pretend that this is not happening and you cannot expect the Palestinians not to react to what happened. So whatever happens uh, today and whatever was happening since morning is reaction uh, by the Palestinians to the to, to the uh, oppression and uh, the the uh, the escalation that started actually by the Israeli forces, not only in Jerusalem but on all the Palestine in all of the Palestinian territories. Of course, of course, and that's that's important information, uh, definitely, Doctor Abdullah. Where you know we've seen every single day uh, this Ramadan, a Palestinian has been killed in the West Bank by Israeli forces with. With over with about six being killed just uh, just yesterday, so with 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 these escalations, um, do we see? Uh, we we mentioned that possibly today there there are rumors going around that they might try to stop uh, Juma prayer. Are there any uh, any big protests planned? Are there any uh, are there still murabitin fil Masjid al Aqsa uh, currently? Yeah, actually the Palestinians are still there. There are more than 5,000 people who, are, who 
uh, refused to leave the, the mosque uh, until now. And the, the Israeli forces are still actually um, cir uh, circulating uh, the Kibli Mosque. And uh, they're, they're trying their best to drive all these 5,000 Murabatil from inside Masjid Laksa and outside uh, the mosque, but they couldn't do it until now. And I think that they're going to try their best to reduce the numbers of the Palestinians, at least to reduce the numbers of the Palestinians to the least they can. Uh, in, in, in this Juma prayer. Why? Because this is the, the, the mark of the beginning of the, uh, the rituals that, that, that the fanatic groups and the extremist groups uh, are, uh, are going to, to start their, um, uh, their way towards sacrificial inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. And then, uh, in, uh, starting from Sunday for about a week, uh, trying to break into Masjid Al-Aqsa with large numbers, where, which is, again, a, 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 a violation of the a status quo inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. The violation of the status quo is a violation of the international law. So nobody can pretend that the Palestinians are actually oppressing anybody. No. The status quo says that nobody can, uh, can perform their rituals except for the Muslims here inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. And there is, this is something that the Israelis do not understand. And those fanatic groups and those extremist groups are, cannot understand. Noting something else here, uh, the Israeli police is not actually uh, an, an official body that is actually trying to reduce or to solve the problem. The Israeli police in Jerusalem and inside Masjid Al-Aqsa in particular are part of the problem because many of the, uh, the, the uh, officers in the, the Israeli police inside Jerusalem and inside Masjid Al-Aqsa are actually part of the uh, uh, extremist uh, um, uh, right wing of the, uh, of the Israelis, of the Israeli government. So... Uh, and this was done during the time of Gilad Ardan, the uh, former uh, minister of, of uh, uh, internal security. Uh, and he's now, I think, the, um, the ambassador of, of Israel in, uh, to, the, to the United Nations. So mm -hmm. he actually changed the whole uh, scope of the Israeli police inside Masjid Al-Aqsa and in Jerusalem by letting many of the members of these uh, wing, uh, right wing groups inside the police uh, body. And this changed the whole uh, shape of the police, uh, despite the fact that they are occupation uh, anyway. But they changed it actually politically and made it motivation, motivately, uh, oh, sorry, motivated politically, politically towards the right wing and towards the, uh, the, extreme, uh, the extreme groups uh, in, in, in Palestine. And this is what happens uh, today. The Israeli police are trying to uh, facilitate uh, the sacrifice uh, inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. And they're trying to facilitate what the Israeli, uh, what the extremist groups are trying to do in Masjid Al-Aqsa. And that is something very dangerous. And we know that we are not actually facing one problem. We are in Jerusalem, we are facing many problems. One of the biggest problems, or the main pr biggest problem, is these, the, the Israeli government itself and the police themselves. They are actually part of the problem, not a solver of the problem, despite the fact that they're trying to pretend uh, as if they are trying to de-escalate everything and de-escalate the situation and blame the Palestinians instead. Definitely, definitely. I think, uh, Dr. Abdullah, one of the, one of the questions that comes up uh, with this is obviously uh, religious-based violence uh, against Muslims during Ramadan is not a new thing. You know, we saw attacks on Masjid Al-Aqsa last year. Historically, um, you know, many of us think that we, we see Israeli aggressions grow during this month. Historically, how, how have these attacks happened against Masjid Al-Aqsa during, during the month of Ramadan? Uh, usually, usually, in, when it when when the month of Ramadan coincides coincides with uh, with uh, uh, with any uh, other um, um, celebrations or any other uh, uh, memorandum days or anything that is related actually to to Jerusalem, these extreme groups try to show the that they are actually the uh, that their belief and their religion is the one that is the superior if i could say over 
the religion uh, of the Palestinian people inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. So they are trying to, br to bring religion to this issue and show superiority in a religious way. And this is very dangerous and very sensitive because you are not speaking about a, 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 any city. You are speaking about Jerusalem. And you are speaking about the, one of the most sensitive cities in the whole world. And those um, extremists are trying all the best since throughout the, 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 the history, the current history, uh, since the occupation, they're trying all the time to make their own beliefs and their own understanding as superior to uh, the other uh, people, to the other, any other, the Christian or Muslims or anybody else. Uh, who's not part of this uh, uh, understanding and this uh, way of, of life. So they are trying, even, even with other uh, 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 Jewish people who do not believe in what, what these extremists actually believe, they're trying to uh, uh, show, uh, uh, to have their own superiority over these uh, values and over these understandings. So, it's very dangerous because it's driving every, every, everything towards uh, a religious uh, escalation. I know I would like to note something today. And just after a few, a few uh, hours of the beginning of the whole uh, thing uh, that started today in, in Jerusalem, um, uh, one of the members, one of the key members of the, uh, of the fanatic groups and the extremist groups, uh, in uh, in the right wing, named uh, Asaf Fred, uh, actually published uh, on, in his Facebook uh, page. Uh, uh, pu he published um, uh, something um, trying to blame the Palestinians for everything, and at the same time urging the police, urging the Israeli police, to confiscate the Qibla Mosque inside Masjid Al-Aqsa and to close it all, all of it, and to change it and, and uh, convert it into uh, a police station, a, a huge police station. So it's really, I don't know, I, it's really crazy, I know. It's mm -hmm. really um, unbelievable and unbelievably crazy as well. However, it's, ha it's happening. And those people have power today in the government and they have power in the police. These people who are thinking in this way who are trying to or who believe like what what Ehud, uh, oh, sorry Ehud Adlik, uh, always say says they believe that pushing everything towards a war a religious war will end up by uh, the 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 coming the second oh, sorry the first coming of the Messiah so they believe that they are trying actually but with this understanding they are trying to 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 uh, willingly push everything towards war, believing that the war might not happen because the Messiah would come. Now, this, you can understand how, how dangerous this thought is, because once you believe that you're, you should uh, push everything towards a religious war in such a sensitive city and a sensitive area like Jerusalem and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, um, Nobody can give you any excuse, actually, and you cannot be excused for this um, for this uh, understanding and for this uh, um, belief. I, 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 it's, it's really hard to uh, to imagine how some some extremes uh, extremists would would think in this way. But this is what's happening, and this is what we are facing, actually, unfortunately, inside Masjid Al Aqsa. Thank you, Doctor Abdullah. I think. Um... You know, it's 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 definitely late over here in the United States. And, I know, I know, uh, I know. Definitely for 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 many of us uh, whose hearts are with our brothers and sisters in Palestine, it's very hard for us to sleep tonight. So thank you so much uh, for uh, for coming on and explaining everything. The last question uh, I would I would ask, inshallah, is uh, of course uh, we tell um, we're letting everyone know that you know your first source. Uh, could come from here at American Muslims for Palestine. But if uh, there are any other sources for us to keep updated uh, throughout the night and throughout the day, inshallah, on uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa that you could recommend for us um, so that we could keep updated and uh, so we're our hearts can eventually be at ease for our brothers and sisters. Actually, uh, um, um, me and other people are trying our best to... to uh... To cover everything that, that that's happening today, and most most importantly, I would urge everybody to try 
to uh, to uh, cope with the people who are inside uh, Jerusalem and try to be with them all the time. Like, for example, uh, there are, we have some friends inside Masjid Al-Aqsa and uh, they're just showing uh, everything that is happening uh, inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. You might find sometimes, uh, in my page, for example, I might sometimes uh, refer to them. So I would urge everybody to uh, keep uh, uh, in, uh, in, co in contact with what is happening in Masjid Al-Aqsa and keep uh, watching the live news as well inside Masjid Al-Aqsa, despite the fact that many, many of them are actually in Arabic language, I know. Uh, however, um, sometimes we have other uh, volunteers who actually go online and while there is a live uh, stream, uh, some people, some of the, uh, our friends and, and brothers and sisters as well are volunteers. They uh, type everything and they try to translate every, everything in English language uh, simultaneously uh, while it is happening. So keep in mind that there are, there are a lot of people like Ramzi Abbasi, like um, uh, uh, Mar uh, Allah Muhammad, Isra Abu Nab, like uh, uh, Abdul Afu, like a lot of a lot of a lot of our friends and uh, brothers inside Masjid Al-Aqsa who are actually showing everything that is happening today inside Masjid Al-Aqsa. And if you have any questions, you are most welcome to come and ask at any time. Thank you very much for the AMP uh, for, for, this, uh, for this coverage, despite the fact that it's too late, I know, in the United States. And I know it's, it's quite hard uh, to stay uh, late, uh, up late uh, today. And you can imagine how the people in Jerusalem are actually feeling as well when they know that their, brother, that their brothers all the way in the United States are actually standing and staying with them all the night and watching what is happening and trying as well to, to uh, spread the word of what is happening in, in Jerusalem and in order to make a pressure over uh, the Israeli forces and the Israeli government in order to stop this oppression over uh, this holy site and over these uh, uh, during these holy days in, uh, in Ramadan and stop changing the status quo in Masjid Laksa, which is the most important thing to be uh, concentrating on now. Thank you very much, Brother Muhammad. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the MP. Of course. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah. For everyone uh, who is now with us, stay tuned with the AMP. Uh, for those living in the United States, uh, within the next day, inshallah, we will be releasing more information on ways that we could be active for our brothers and sisters uh, in Masjid Al-Aqsa and how we could be active for the Masjid, inshallah. Barakallah feekum. Thank you again, Dr. Abdullah. And, uh, uh, we will uh, be following you closely, inshallah, over the next 24 hours. Barakallah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.